Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, my, uh, as you know, my, my name is David Wynn Miller, but I punctuate my name. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Benjamin Franklin, all punctuated the name same as I did. They were all 34 degree master masons. Now, I don't know if there's any masons in the crowd, but I am a 92nd degree mason. Uh, I know you've been taught that masonry goes to 33 and 34 degrees for grand masters. The reason I'm a 92nd degree mason is because in 1988 I broke the math interface in all 5,000 languages, proving that language is a linear equation in algebra. This hasn't been done in 8,500 years of written language. When I did so, I was able to unlock the two-thirds of all the words missing from all languages in the world, and I can write any sentence in any language, frontwards and backwards, with the same meaning. Once this was discovered, it completely, uh, 48 hours after I published on the Internet, I had two Secret Service agents from Washington at my front door going, do you realize what you've done? You've just disqualified every treaty, trust, and contract in 8,500 years on planet Earth. I says, well, uh, he says, who did you tell? I says, everyone. I says, I sent out uh, 100 videos, 20 hours long, including a 100-page report on the entire studies to all nations of the United Nations and over 100 TV and news agencies around the United States. By doing that, I protected myself because when you have a secret that is so profound that it would disqualify planet Earth, it would cause you to get shot. <laughs> and at every seminar, at, by the end of the seminar, there's always a dozen people that walk up to you and say, why are you still walking around? Well, as Pandora, uh, uh, destroyer of worlds, now you might think that that's a bad thing. The word destroyer, D-E means no, and destroy is contract. Of is an adverb which connects to a pronoun in front of it. P-R-O means no, N-O means no, and U-N means no. So the word destroyer is a no, no, no word. Of is an adverb, A-D-V, it's a modifier. Modifiers connect the pronouns in front of it and modify the verb after it. Modification is change, change is motion, motion is action, and action is verb. Therefore, the word world becomes a verb. Do you live in a world of verb or do you live in a world of a fact? As you all know, the, world is a, the word world is a fact. But because it's the destroyer of verb, I destroyed the world of verb in all 5,000 languages worldwide on April 6th, 1988. And so with that said, how did this come about? Well, in 1980, I went through a divorce. And in the divorce, Judge Stanley Miller said, you cannot uh, be a father to your children. And he took away my children. I'm going, why would you do that? I've been a good father for 10 years. And he goes, because I'm a judge, he says, and I can take away people's children just because I can. I says, well, that's sex discrimination under the 1964 Civil Rights Act for Equality. Uh, I says, I'm going to prosecute you. And he says, you can't prosecute judges. He says, I beg the difference. I says, I know what the law is. You swore to support the Constitution of the United States and the laws written by the United States Congress, Senate, and Legislature. I says, that includes equality. I says, if I don't have equality, that's discrimination. Pretty simple. So I, I prosecuted Judge Stanley Miller in 1980, and he was disbarred as a judge. Six year, seven years later, Stanley Miller got reappointed again. Two weeks later, after he was reappointed, I showed up in his courtroom, had him disbarred again four days later. Because <laughs> seven years later, 1994, got reappointed again. And uh, I uh, showed up in his courtroom two weeks after he got reappointed, had him disbarred a third time. Three years later, he died in 1997. And uh, never served much on the bench. Always was an administrator, but never a, a judge. In... Uh, in, as, as a result of that, when the judge took away my children, that violation, that breaking of my heart, put me on a path. And that path was anger. You don't take away a, a parent's child. And the, the pain that that caused, pain makes thought, thought makes wisdom, and wisdom grows to maturity. So the, the, the grammar that's used for modification is, 
is what they keep us down with, the, the way, what they teach you in school. Now, lawyers and attorneys are all licensed to lie. They, they, they write everything in adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and pronoun, adverb, verb. They don't use prepositional phrases because they don't, they're not allowed to use a fact. No law or fact shall be tried in court. And if you want to put that in there, of law, and everybody uses this term, you know, attorney at law, attorney of law, whatever. Parts of speech, no is an adverb, it's negative. Law now becomes a verb, negative, or is a neutral. Negative fact becomes a negative verb also. Shall is a pronoun in future time connected to the adverb be, which now modifies a verb in past time. In is an adverb making court a verb, of is an adverb making law a court a verb. Now we've got one jurisdiction, ladies and gentlemen. We have a verb law, a verb court, a verb tried, a verb law, a verb fact. Now we have one jurisdiction called fiction, fraud, illusion. Every word in the English language, and I spent 8,000 hours and two years with a staff of individuals with dictionaries. We looked up every word in the English language that starts with a vowel and two consonants. It means no contract. Every word. Now, when you look at any contract or any newspaper or magazine, you see a, a, the word starts with a vowel, A, E, I, O, and U. And it's used as a single syllable. It means no contract also. Opinion. O is a no. P-I-N is to attach or grab. I-O-N is contract. Opinion. No attached contract. Therefore, that's why it's called an opinion. You can have a gain, G-A-I-N. You put A in front of it, again, you have no gain. You can have an attorney, A-T-T, -T, no tort. You can have an illusion, I-L-L, -L, which means you cannot see a contract. Imagination, I-M-M. -M. You cannot mangle. You can't mangle something, therefore there's no fact. So the imagination, I-O-N, means contract. A-N-T-E-N-T-I-O-N-T-Y. -E Any vowel that appears in front of a vowel that ends a word means contract. It's a two-letter contract. That, that's, that's how you can tell these things. Uh, this is called parse, P-A-R-S-E, parts of speech. S-C is Latin for speech. P-A-R is parts. So what I did was I studied parse. I studied syntax. Syntax is how two words come together. And the word grammar is how a sentence is constructed. Do you know that all grammar, a correct word, word sentence, only has one verb in it? The average sentence written by an attorney has anywhere from three to five verbs in it. Some sentences have adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb. The whole sentence is written that way. There's not even an adjective or a pronoun, a preposition, article, or a fact. When, they went to, when you were in school, fifth grade, we studied prepositional phrases. That was the preposition article and noun made up your prepositional phrase. Mrs. Lusher was a, my fifth grade English teacher in Marion County grade school in North Grove, Indiana. We were farmers, too. We, my mom and dad gave that a shot. We had six, I had six brothers and sisters, so big family. When they, we studied prepositions, pre meant no position. An article, anytime you have a vowel two consonants, A-R-T, we have no no uh, ownership. So if you have no position and you have no ownership, you have a no-no. N-O is no and U-N is no in Latin. Better known as the noun. So what we did is when we, when we disqualified this, 
1999, we had to come up with a brand new answer for a mathematical interface on grammar. So we, we did this. We had a position, dropping the word pre. And the word lodio is spelled L-O, which is location, D-I is original, A-L is contract. And if you have ownership, in other words, for my pen, for is a position, my is lodial, then pen would then become a fact. Now, if I, use, if I just were to drop one of these two positions here and say uh, my pen and drop the word for or with my pen and I drop the word with and just say my pen, my becomes an adverb. And an adverb modifies a verb. Modification is change. Change is motion. Motion is action. Action is verb. Seen so all the ADV, volume two consonants, modifier. EDJ, adjective, color, modifier. PRO, no. NO, no. UN, no. They gave us a lot of negative choices, all to go with this sentence here. When you graduate from judge school, you learn this article. You learn this. All judges, attorneys, lawyers, politicians all swear the same oath that no law or fact shall ever be tried in court. And no is a negative. That's why the sign says no trespassing, no parking, no uh, don't walk. And see, what the sign should read for the trespassing on this land is with the fee of the $5,000. For the parking of the car in this space is with the fee of the $500. That's a performance contract. Everyone understands performance contracts. Now I have the Pizza Hut next to the Outback Steakhouse. Very popular places on Saturday night and Friday night. And the, the, the people... Come, came to my seminar from uh, Pizza Hut. They said, you know, we've got two spaces reserved for delivery. And everybody parks in there. And my delivery guy's got no place to park. I says, well, put a sign up. For the parking of the car is with a crushing and melting. <laughs> the sign next to it says, for the parking of the car is with a fee of the $500. No one ever parked in those two parking spaces again, <laughs> except the delivery man. <laughs> Problem solved. But going back to the beginning, it says the United States of America. Now, we all study that prepositions were of, and the article was the. When you separate the prepositions, they all become, art, they all become adverbs. That means you have 68 prepositions and 38 articles. Together, you have 100 adverbs. So thus, an adverb now modifies united to be a no citizen. UN is no, ITE is citizen. ED is in past time, which means you have no now time jurisdiction. It's also an adjective because whenever you put two nouns together called the United States because it's a title of a country, united becomes a fact and states becomes a fact. But when you put a fact in front of a fact, the first fact becomes an adjective, which now turns the second fact, and an adjective is coloring or modification, which now changes the fact into a pronoun. P-R-O means no, N-O means no, and U-N means no. The pronoun is now connected to the adverb, A-D-V, vowel two consonants, no contract. And then the adverb modifies, modifies change, changes motion, motion is action, and action is verb, and America becomes a dangling participle verb on the money. Now, A is a single syllable. Therefore, A means no. M-E-R-I is Latin for mercy, and C-A is Latin for sheep. No mercy for the sheep. So we pay 65% taxes. <laughs> But because America is the verb on a corporate instrument. Now, we have two signatures on the money. Therefore, this is a corporate instrument. Corporations are under Title 15, Section 1692E, false and misleading statements. Carries a penalty of $25 million and 30 years in prison for every note published under Title 15, Section 78FF. Under Title 15, Section 1639A, there was no notification given to the United States population 
that the modification of grammar under Title 18, Section 1001, which is the fictitious conveyance of language, was going to be used on our Federal Reserve notes on our money. So to protect the fraud, we put a box around it. Anything in a box is an enclosed area and can't be considered. It was engineered, folks. Not a mistake. Engineered. Just like you build a space shuttle, it's engineered. If it's perfect, it works. Well, we had a perfect fraud. What's the first two little words over here? It says this note. It doesn't say for this note or by this note or of this note or with this note. It says this note. Therefore, we drop the preposition. This becomes an adverb making note a verb. Does this look like a verb to you? Mm, misrepresentation. So now we have a Title 18, Section 1341, mail fraud. Carries a $1 million fine and 30 years in prison. Title 18, 1001, fictitious conveyance of grammar. Title 18, Section 13, uh, I'd rather, Title 15, Section 1692E, false and misleading statements. And we have Title 18, 1621, perjury, because we didn't advertise it. Now we have four criminal acts that take place on the dollar bill. Bill Clinton then says to Congress, you know, in two weeks I've got to address the union and do my union address. I have to tell the world that America's a verb on the money and then articulate the criminal activities that are taking place here and disqualify all U.S. currency to 150 countries worldwide depend on for commerce, food, and energy. Or we can seal a case. All those in favor of sealing the case, raise your hand. Hundred two <laughs> hands goes up and he walks out and doesn't say a word. So the, uh, the money, the money is a key here. Follow the, always follow the money. Now, you came here, most of you, or some of you, are involved with mortgages. The mortgage that you are in possession of was written entirely in adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and pronoun, adverb, verb. The mortgage has 6,000 mistakes on it. It is a perfect document that has absolutely zero facts on it, and it was not signed by your bank. No mortgage in the United States of 64 million mortgages was ever signed by the bank since, 18, uh, since 1934. We're going to go through a sentence structure now. The first part of a sentence we use the word for. If you look at my website, it's 400 pages long. Every sentence starts with the word for as the preposition. We use the as a neutral article. You have, when it comes to articles, or what we call lodio. We'll put a square bracket because this means no contract. You have a and the, this, these. Those are the five that I use in, uh, in my program. Pretty simple, it seems how you have, you have 38 articles and we only use five. Second part is there's a consequence. Now, a consequence is a fact. In other words, I stand here and I look at this room, and I have knowledge. My knowledge allows me to understand people, tables, chairs, architectural structures. The consequences of, of having knowledge creates a cause. As we get older, we acquire more and more knowledge, which allows us to understand the consequences of the facts. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to think. Thinking, I'll put that in ing. Thinking is a verb, which is motion. Now, running is not a verb. Jumping is not a verb. Driving is not a verb. And thinking, you have to you have to think before you can do all these things. 
Order of operations, folks. You always have to follow the order of operations to have a legal contract. Even writing the sentence. Writing the sentence is not see the pen. See is a pronoun, thus an adverb, making pen a verb. That's a second grade reader. See the ball. See Jack run. See is an adverb, making now run to Jack to be an adjective of the word run, which is a pronoun, which means nothing. You see, and these are first grade readers. They're a complete lie. So don't, don't get your kids tied up in that. You want to teach them how to read? Go to my website. That'll really fry them. <laughs> <laughs> Four. When you think, okay, we look. This is, we'll, we'll put this to be sight. Because, or see. You see stuff. And you need a see. You need a C pass, uh, rather C treaty. You need a C S E A pass. C pass means that you can move a vessel in a sea of space. So when you have knowledge, you have these positions that you're going to see and absorb points of information. You hear points of information. You're using your five senses to absorb information. And with that information, we then store it as a computer. So the consequences is a storage. Just like a computer. And we keep all this information in until we're asked the question. Then you go into motion, just like when you're entering a keyboard. You might put stuff in. It's going to store it. When you want it out, you hit enter, ask it a question, and hit enter, and it does a search. It goes thinking and now gives you a claim. With is a is a as a possession. Possessive, which becomes your claim. Now claims are you only have two different things. You either have a plus or a minus. You're either going to have a an award, not award, you're going to have a a value. See the word a ah, a means no award, a w a r d. Award. Now, the word award is because the contract is written in adverb verb means you get nothing. You might get a future tense, futuristic Federal Reserve note. Or you might get a promise, pay to, in future time, which is a pronoun adverb scenario. But you don't have any now time facts. So therefore, with the possessive, you possess a claim. The claim has to be defined so we're going to go here five of the contract. Now the contract has to be of the contract terms. Number six is with the correct sentence structure communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Okay, what does that mean? Well, there's a thing, you hear the word right, you hear the word truth. Truth is an opinion, by the way. Everybody believes in God, that's your truth, but that truth is based on your opinion of subjective interpretation, so therefore truth is an opinion. And O means no, and P-I-N means to attach, and I-O-N is contract. So you have no attached contract because your subjective interpretation of your ability to communicate with any other individual is based on that other a person's ability to understand what you're saying in the first place, which is babble, <laughs> because it's all adverb, verb scenario. Now, I may be talking to you in adverb, verb, because that's the only language you understand. If I get into, if I stood up here and talked to you, and uh, for this knowledge of this individual is with the claim of the correct parse syntax grammar, uh, start using prepositional phrases, uh, this would not jar well with your perception. And you'd, you'd kind of get lost. So it takes about 200 hours to adapt to this technology. And you will get a migraine headache because you're all brainwashed not to see an article. You might think that's a joke, it's not. Sublimic messaging through TV, radio, newspapers, and magazines, school books, 
have been there your whole life, right in front of you. We hide it in plain view, just like we hide a flag in plain view, and we cancel this contract by putting a Coke can on top of the, the staff, which is a phoenix in this case. If the wingtips are down, it's a phoenix. If they're up, it's an eagle, which is postal. So you can either be under postal guys or you can be under the Vatican guys. Either way, you're under somebody's guise, G-U-I-S-E. It's not a disguise, it's a guise, G-U-I-S-E. This meaning no guise. This means no, by the way. Finally, number seven is by the author. Authority. Authentic. Authorization. And what's the symbol for gold on the periodic table? AU. He who holds the gold makes the rules has the authority. Ever wonder why gold was the key? Why it was AU and not something else? Because gold is spelled G O L D, not AU, but AU is authority. So, these are the parts of what a sentence is. Now, a sentence has to be written frontwards and backwards. If you notice, we have <coughs> for of, is, with of, with, by. Now, after the with of, we can have as many of these, like I have one sentence in the book, last page of the book here. This is my book. It's 96 pages long. It's written in nine-point print. It's the only book in the, in the world that's written in quantum language. I have no competition. I have no plagiarizers anywhere on the planet. It's kind of unique to be a one source of 8 billion people and nobody's giving me any competition. I have a monopoly on this thing, virtually. And it isn't because I have a monopoly. It's because it's so, it's so unique. The condition of math, the condition of a fact in a world of 8 billion fictions is so unique that it stands alone and there's no plagiarizing. The, all the judges, all the attorneys on planet Earth and all languages have been ordered to find, to search history, go into the archives of written history going back 8,500 years. Is this an original program? The answer was yes. This whole thing is 100% original, that there's never been anything like it on the planet for communication skills. So the books... The books took me, this is 8,000 hours or 80,000 hours of my work put in 96 pages. Uh, this is part of it. All the new stuff is updated on the, on the internet, on my website. But this gives you a, about an 80% solid base that you can hold in your hand and read. And it takes about 200 hours. I charge $200 for the books because they're, <clears throat> they're the only ones like it on the planet. There's no competition for it. So... They're, they're very unique. People that have them, guard them. They don't, they don't treat them like garbage, like the local newspaper, because when you put value on something, it becomes valuable. If I gave you this, this marker, you'd use it, put it down, and walk away. If I charge you $200 for this marker, you'd put it in a glass, a, a glass jar, put it up on your fireplace, and say, that's valuable. You know? because of what it means to you. Education is the same way. You go to college and you pay for an education, you put value on it, you stay awake in class. If somebody else gives you a scholarship and your schooling is free, you sleep through class. Or you put a tape recorder and say, I'll study later, but you don't learn anything. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the back of the cover page, this is the, this is the key to the book. This, this one page took six years of my life to, to write, 12,000 hours of study, to go and work, travel all over the United States. I spent a great deal of time in the uh, fifth basement under the Philadelphia uh, Library. It's a top-secret library uh, facility with, art, uh, with books that go back six, 700 years. And once I get into the old books... I can syntax two-thirds of all the missing words. I called it a cartoon. The judge turns around and looks at it and says, yeah, it's a cartoon. <laughs> the first day I was in court with these people, uh, underneath the, the seal of all the courts, they have a, a ribbon. 
The ribbon has words on it. Between the words, they have dots. Because it's a seal, a dot is used in two locations under syntax. On a seal, it's used as a prepositional phrase. On money, it's used as a prepositional phrase because of the restriction of space. So the dot between words, in other words, if I were to have a, a word here, if I put it here, it's called a period. But if I put it in the middle, that's a prepositional phrase. So if I did this, and I said for the possession, this would be, this would be for the with of the uh, of the the with the possession. Question. How do you sign your name? It's like that. Just like no, I don't sign it. This is called an autograph. Autograph. <clears throat> the colon is for the David hyphen win of the Miller family. My degree sign is because I'm a 92nd degree Mason. Huh? I have one more question. With the, uh, the colons in front of the name. Oh, that's a prepositional phrase. For the, for the David right. hyphen win, full colon, which means for the David win of the Miller family. This is a pronoun in front. If you if you leave out the colon, this is this is a pronoun uh, of the Miller, which means this is a nothing of the Miller family. So therefore, it's a, a, a mistake. So you got to put it in there. Okay. There's 528 symbols in the in the under Microsoft. If you get in your computer, you can look them all up and pull them up on the screen. Uh, it's probably a good three-year study on symbols. If you want to get into it, uh, we use like like the address. Uh, like my address in Milwaukee. This is a tilde hyphen, tilde, hyphen, and then Milwaukee. And this is a tilde. Milwaukee is not the name. It's a location. Wisconsin, it's a location. And you put tildes. Tilde means location. Anybody want to correspond with me and by letter or mail me things? That's, that's where you send it. David Wynn Miller. 5166 North 63rd Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53218. That's my address. What would happen if you put a hyphen between the building and the walking? Would that be wrong? No, you don't. Not here. When you start, you just use your tilde. Now, here would be, this is a comma, hyphen, tilde. Microsoft will also give you We'll, we'll give you, uh, we'll say this is correct. If you, if you drop off the hyphen, you're going to get an underlining, which means you're using the wrong symbolizations. So you've got to have a comma. Now, when you write the state, this is a letter, this is a number. These are two different, two different entities. You don't, even though this might be a, a WIP or WI dot uh, for postal codes, Whenever you go from a word to a number, like this here, you don't need the, uh, this, this actually has a have to, hyph have to have a hyphen here too. But as soon as you autograph your name in that manner, it says that you have been, you've been exposed to this technology. All the judges know, all the judges in the United States, 11,000, both state and federal, have been trained in this technology for 17 years. I've been teaching at Scott Sale, Arizona, since 1995 in Reno, Nevada, at the Judge Institutes through both video and my program, both on the internet and in the books. They're made aware of every year we give the, pass out the books to the judges here in New Zealand, Australia, England, United Nations. They get copies of my books. See, if I wrote my name in, in cursive. Like that, the word cursive. The word curse. T 
to talk to dead people. And this is an adjective, adjective pronoun. This is also classified as italic, which means it's removed from the paper, so it's blank. So when I autograph my paper, I should print it like you have done. Correct. You do it like this. Okay, so I But can, if you're not a mason, don't put the degree sign on there. I do that. But they're fully aware of that. So my autograph should be printed upper lowercase. Everybody should be printing. This was taught to you. When I was a kid in school, they cracked my knuckles with rulers because I would write what I, I would write correct. They made it mandatory that everybody use cursive because they wanted you to disqualify your contract by using cursive, by dead language. And then, then they've got this one. Everybody know that little one? This is an adverb. This is a verb. I swear to talk to dead people in the future tense <clears throat> to make fiction, the being an adverb with no contract of an opinion, so as an adverb to make an illusion, me as a adverb, I feel like an adverb today, folks, uh, to modify the verb God, which is uh, incorrect. He goes, well, that's a math problem. He says, no one ever went to war over a math problem. I says, ah, oh, you guys understand that. I says, do you know that every single one of you in this room put an adverb in front of the word God? And everyone all got to think, what does it say? The church of God. Adverb, verb, adverb, verb. The house of God. Uh, church of Christ. Church is a pronoun. It's an adverb making Christ a verb. It says, every condition that you have said here, you've put an adverb in front of your belief. And I'll just like that, everyone in the room goes, well, God's not a verb. He's a fact. Just, what did you what did you all put it down in writing for? I mean, you put your signs up in front of the... Well, that's what the lawyers told us to do when they wrote the signs. I says, yeah, lawyers are liars. So are attorneys. I says, the whole thing is to keep you kept in the world of fiction. Now, where did laws come from? Every law in the world came from the religions. The, the religion came first in the community, in the, in the, the uh, ministers, <clears throat> the bishops, the cardinals. Uh, anybody who was a church leader, a religious leader, engineered condition of brainwashing for 8,500 years going back in, to the beginning of, of written history. And I took time to do the studies on this, and that's why I can make the statement to everybody. I'm not here to disqualify anybody's religious beliefs. It's just subjective interpretation of knowing how, they, they got you, how you got into the situation in the first place. So... It's important that, that all of us are uh, aware of our, of our heritage. And what we're doing is we're bringing things into a quantum, a mathematical procedure of knowing where the secrets lie. When you're able to learn syntax and get into the Bibles, any Bible you want to choose, and identify those parts of speech and put the missing words in, you're going to see new definitions. And they can be written both frontwards and backwards. And that's the unique thing. The math interface on grammar was very simple. I spent three years with all different kinds of, of different programs in math, trying to break this code. And the, the code was x plus 1 equals 2 2 minus 1, ah, yeah.
So you got you got x plus two equals three, three minus two equals one, one equals x, x times two, three equals six, six divided by three equals two, two equals x. In other words, we add, subtract, multiply, and divide to find out by doing math backwards what the secret is to correct the math. And no one ever went to oral math problem because they said we just do it backwards and check your math. That was pretty simple. So what I have in my hand here is a pen. I throw that pen up in the air. The motion of thinking didn't change this fact. So motion, and the courts always want you to file motions, but they change the facts with motions because what they're doing is they're modifying the facts with adverbs, creating verbs. But the verb, that now they want to say the pen does an adverb making pen a verb. They want to take this article and change it into something that's not. Therefore, you commit perjury. So if we go back to this problem here, if we have a fact here at the beginning, and we have a fact over here, we have a fact here, and we have a fact here, this must be a correct program. The thing that appears in front of a fact is a conjunction, which is and and or. Those are the only two conjunctions in the English language. What you have in front of that, when you factor these, when you factor them out, is you've got a, a, plus three, a plus two and a minus two, a multiple three and a division three. Okay, when we were in, in grafting, here's a negative two and here's a positive two. When we go up and down the scale, it's motion. Therefore, we assign the, the, uh, the number to a verb, and we factor that out, because a verb doesn't have any modification. That's your thinking of a sentence. What is left is add, subtract, multiply, and divide, which are opposite operations, better known as the preposition or the position. What is a position? A position means we will use the... We, we're going to have a contract first before we get started. We agree that we're going to use the ABC alphabet to op identify this pen or this object. With the ABC alphabet, we're now going to take this object and we're going to spell it pen, P-E-N. What is the pen for? The pen is for writing. So we're going to have an a alphabet, a spelling, and a definition. Therefore, we know what the position of this object is. Now, who owns this pen? For my pen, with my pen, of my pen, by my pen. You see, now I can go ahead and identify this because of lodial positioning of ownership, which we used to call the article. But the article, uh, when you had a preposition, it meant you had no position, so you could presume anything. If, pre if you had no preposition, and no ownership, but an article, which meant no contract, you had a no-no, henceforth a noun. But now we had to change it to a position, lodial fact. With that said, we now have a, a word that has 900 definitions. I proved that every word in the English language has 900 definitions because we have 68 articles and 38, I mean, 68 prepositions and 38 articles that gives you 1,800. When you multiply it, divided by 2 is 900. So with 900 definitions for a pen, I can say, for my pen, for your pen, with your pen, with my pen, of your pen, of my pen. Every time I change the preposition, I change the definition. I can say his, yours, uh, hers, this, the, a, and... And keep going through the whole list. Put them all down, cross-reference them all up with the word pen, and I got 900 definitions. Put two, de two definitions together, 900 times 900 is 810,000 variables with two words. Put a third one times 900, and you've got 720 million variables. Put a fourth one, and you have 64, 640 billion variables. A fifth one, you have 700... Uh, 540 trillion variables. They said, well, the computers are only rated for 
uh, the capacity. Write a 200-word sentence, and we're talking about a number with 200 zeros after it, variables, to write a legal sentence. They're saying the computers don't have enough memory capacity to write one sentence. Try writing a whole book or a 400-page website and do it correct 100% of the time. When you're working in a math problem, you've got to be correct 100% of the time. There is no room for error. You know, they build a space shuttle with, with 3 million components. It goes to the moon. They screw up with one. Any number of, of variables, 3 million correct things times zero, still equals zero. That's why the space shuttle blew up on the, in 1983. I was there at ground zero. Left hand re develops the right side of your brain, which is logic. The right-handed people use their left side of their brain, which is emotions. Anytime two of you were to get into an argument, no matter what you are saying to, to each other, and you are heightened emotionally, I can throw a math problem at you, like 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. In a time it would take you to analyze the answer of that, you would take all your energy from your left brain, transfer it to your right brain, your blood pressure would drop 60 points, your emotional would become stabilized in 3 seconds, and you'd be using the logic side of your brain and stop fighting. So anytime you get upset, do a math problem, completely cancel your emotional upset. How's that for a <laughs> fix it? <laughs> Didn't know that about your human brain, did you? So <clears throat> what is an adverb? An adverb is a modifier. It modifies the condition of the speed of thinking. It's primarily designed to modify the verb in, in speech. The verb is the word thinking, or, or the word motion. And motion comes from thinking. So the adverb is a modifier of speed. Now, when you modify something, you change it from its origin. Well, if it's not origin, it's perjury. Simple as that. If it is not the fact and you changed it, that's perjury. I don't care what language you speak, I don't care what country you come from, 8 billion people understand the word perjury. And so you've, you've told a lie because you've created an opinion. <clears throat> this one here, motion, or rather the adjective, we're going to deal this with color. Anybody want to define color? Explain to Helen Keller, who was born blind, what the color blue is, or color red, or yellow. You can't explain color to a blind person. Turn off all the lights. You see, black is the absence of energy. There is no such thing as a, as a, uh, a negative. You can only have different degrees of energy. In the, in, in the universe. There is no such thing as a negative. So the, take this room, for instance. We've, we've got thousands of candle powers of fluorescent light, and it's very bright in here. But even the smallest spark of energy creates an illusion, will give you the reflected illusion that is necessary. So you can't prove a negativity. The adjective, ADJ, means no contract because the IVE is contract. And the adjective is going to, color is an opinion. And an adjective cannot exist unless it is filed by a fact. Because the color has to be able to modify something. So the adjective must always appear in front of a noun but then, or a fact, but then when you put an adjective in front of a fact, it becomes a pronoun because this is modifying the fact. Now it's a no, no, no. P-R-O is no, N-O is no, and U-N is no. So pronoun has been modified into non-existence. The position is an alphabet, A-B-C. We're going to spell the pen using the alphabet. We're going to spell it P-E-N. We're going to give it a definition for the writing. Look, in any dictionary, it says a pen is used for writing. It's used as a noun. 
However, I take, I take a pen and I hold it like this. I now have a stabbing instrument and I stab somebody with it. It's carrying a concealed weapon, carries a 10-year prison sentence for carrying a concealed weapon and 10 years for assault with a, with a deadly weapon. Or I make a fist with it for as a stabbing tool. It's your volition. If I hold it like this, it's a tool for writing. So the simple way you conduct yourself while holding a pen or a pencil can get you thrown in jail for 10 years. So be careful what kind of jokes you want to play when you're in the presence of law enforcement and what your attitude is. If the government wants your farm, they can charge you with carrying a concealed weapon and throw you into a quandrum of illusion gets you to sign off and turn over your farm to the government, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock, and all of a sudden you're sitting on the street going, what happened to me? We're just going to use this as the person's name. Okay, if it's more than double spaces, what you have is a... <clears throat> uh, a, a, a group of pronouns that are on the paper. There's no legal sentence called grammar. Now this is a, we're going to use these dashes to represent character spaces. State of Illinois is a verb. I'll just take that. All right. This is a I, comma, so this is a pronoun for. Having is a pronoun <clears throat> Modified by the bin. Now we have three character spaces, which results in a zero here as a dead continuance. And then you have a pronoun appointed. AP means no point, and ED is in past time. So you have three violations on a word that should be used as a condition of state, now meaning nothing. Two is an adverb in future time. The is an adverb. Office means no contract. Uh, as a verb, I mean, this is an adjective. Now, the reason this becomes an adjective is because there's a two-character space break between police officer and the word of. So this is a one, three, four. And again, you, you have a break here, an officer, office, O-F meaning no, is a volunteer consonant. Then in is an adverb. Rather, there's, there's a double space here again. So in becomes a pronoun, the is an adverb making city to be a verb, of is an adverb making wheat and to be an adjective of in, which is a pronoun, the is an adverb making county to be a verb, of is an adverb making DuPage, an adjective of aforesaid. Now aforesaid, af means no, and F-O-R-E also means no. So we have a double no-no here of the word said, which says nothing. Do is a pronoun modified by the adverb solemnly, which then modifies the verb swear. Or, in the word affirm, which means no contract, as a pronoun, comma, that I will, that is an ad adverb, I mean, a, uh, yeah, that is a pronoun, I is an adverb, will is an adverb, support is a verb, the is an adverb, and then it was the uh, Constitution of the U.S. So that would be a verb, an a, uh, the adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and united means no citizen. Where's my prepositional phrase, five, six, and seven? That's a $25 million fine and 30 years in prison. He's carrying a gun and a badge without authorization of an oath of office. That's 12 officers. Yeah. And that's exactly what you've got. And when I do this, just like when the marshals surrounded me in Honolulu, I said, you know, guys, I got a signed confession of all you guys. You all are facing 25 years in prison as organized crime running the government. Now, if there's only one word that follows that word, the, and there's a comma, that word is going to be a verb, two. If there are two words that follow that word, it's going to be a three and a four. Like here. One, three, four, and there'll probably be a fourth word, which would then become a pronoun. If there's only two words, it'll be a four, one, two. If there's four words, it'll be a four, one, three, four. And then they have another comma. 
throughout the entire mortgage of your own property, if you look at it, you will see there are three, four, and five word combinations set off by commas to break the continuance of evidence. And then with, with the commas, you'll have spacing or numbers, a parentheses, quotation marks, italicizing, or double spaces. And those are going to break the continuance of evidence. So they keep isolating these four little phrases to stay within this procedural argument. Now, the Internal Revenue Service says, um, under penalty of perjury, adverb, verb, adverb, verb. So you got a one, two, one, two, one, two scenario. The instructions from the notary, a notary, No contract. <clears throat> We're going to give you a notice today. Which is not ice. We're going to give you a Indictment, written just like that. What does that say? Does that say indictment? Actually, what it says is adverb, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, pronoun. Because it's an underlying space, underlying space, underlying space. That's what it really says in syntax. It's called parse. Your vowels are used as adverbs. The consonants... If you look at all the letters in the alphabet, all 26 are nouns because they are, the, they are the letter that identifies that section of the alphabet. Therefore, they are a fact. But when the fact is used, followed by put in front of another fact, it's an adjective, pronoun. But if it's a letter and it's a single vowel, A, E, I, O, N, U, it becomes an adverb. The adverb modifies the adjective, which modifies the pronoun. One three four, one three three four. Henceforth, you go back up here. Uh, four one three four, or one three four. One three four. The patterns are always used. They have never changed from the Constitution of 1775 to present day. The Magna Carta, when I syntax it, 1215, written in adverb verb. The foundation of the of the English Empire. We'll go back over here again. When we, when, we when, we, when we disqualified the preposition as being no position, the article being a, a word of no contract, which gave you a no-no, we now realize that they had mistaught all of us what prepositional phrases were. And so we had in, in 2000... 2nd of January 2000, we again came out with the position lodial fact phrase. We also brought in past time and future time. A 1922 book, maybe a reader, it was a 1922 reader from the Depression. I was in Las Vegas, Nevada. And, and a lady by the name of Joy brought me this book and says... Read page 9. I read page 9. It says, to future time, from past time. I'm going like, oh, my God. All my technology from 1995 published to 2000 was written with the word to and from. As you know, a sentence can only exist with one idea. I'm going to the store from the house. Two different time zones. The sentence is, uh, is wrong because there's two different times. The future doesn't exist, and the past has no damage. So therefore, we dropped all future and past, and it took me three months to rewrite my program, removing all the prepositional facts, bringing everything into now time. Present time, P-R-E means no sent, which is contract. So you had three choices, the past, the present, and the future, all meaning no contract. So we had to go to now time. 
So we created the now time, and then we the conjunction and and or and is a command and or is a is an option. Do you know that 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 lesson cost me sixteen hundred dollars to learn what and and or meant? I had a real estate company. I told you for twenty six years, and I evicted one of my tenants. Uh, it was a December before Christmas. It said, "Quit and pay rent." And the judge was ready to sign it, and the clerk goes, you can't sign that. He says, why not? He says, because he gave you a command. He commanded the people to quit and get out. He says, you only have jurisdiction if there's an option, judge. This is the clerk telling the judge. He must say, quit or pay rent. Now, if the or doesn't act within a given amount of time, which is 10-day notice, then the judge can sign an order for the sheriff's department to go out and evict the individual. He says, that's right. This is wrong because used and instead of or. Start over. 45 days later, get a court date. 45 days after that for eviction. That's 90 days. Got to stay in my house for three more months, not paying rent. Cost me 1600 bucks because they used and and or. Oh. This was a compound noun. All my writings have underlined on compound nouns. But when you drop this, this becomes, anytime you have two facts, a claimant is a fact, knowledge is a fact. When you put a fact in front of a fact, this becomes an adjective, making this into a pronoun. Except the is an adverb. The only word that the adverb can attach to would be another adverb, but knowledge of. Of becomes a pronoun because it's been modified by two adjectives. The first word in a sentence, always the authority always runs backwards. And the word and here is a conjunction. If I put a full colon after this, I would break it, and this would become a real fact now. But without it, this becomes a pronoun. The pronoun has to be connected by an adverb. The adverb has to connect, and all does are adverbs now making this into a verb, but because there's punctuation here, this automatically becomes an independent pronoun. And these are all pronouns, pronoun, and this then becomes an adverb, making court to be an adjective of the word with, which now becomes a pronoun again. It's not a fact, so it's a nothing, because it's been modified. <laughs> the da is for the da. And they're going like, lady stands up and goes, well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> He says, yeah, but what does it say? Does it mean anything to anybody in this room? Why don't we syntax it? Here's a prepositional phrase. Can you put a verb in front of a ver uh, pronoun? Or, I mean, a preposition. Yes, you can put a verb in front of a preposition. Can you put an adverb in front of a verb? Well, the answer is yes. Can you put a, uh, an article in front of an adverb? The answer is no. So the only solution here is the adverb modifies the verb, which modif is connected to the adverb, which modifies the verb, which connected to the adverb, which modifies the verb. So I use the as an adverb and a verb. Or... It's a four, one, three, four, one, two. That's also correct. Because there's no prepositional phrase in front of four, but for the, and as the word four becomes a pronoun, the is now an adverb, connects, and then modifies the adjective is, which modifies the pronoun for, which is connected to the adverb the, which modifies the verb the. Depends on what the volition of the writing is. I'm going to read this out loud. There's a quick step. One, two, one, two, one, two. A judge would say, this is the way I want it. An attorney who doesn't know what a judge knows is going to go, four, one, three, four, four, one, two. What is my exercise? I use the as a verb. I use the as an adverb. I use the as a pronoun. Three, identity, three different syntax identities. You don't believe me? Pull the dictionary out and look up the word the. 
It's used as an adjective, an adverb, a pronoun, a preposition, an article, and a noun. Now, if I want to do it a different way, I could do a, a one, three, four, one, three, four. That's also legal. So now I used it as a pronoun, an adjective, an adverb, and a verb. Four different identities, and all four of those, are, all three of those, are correct. Now, how would I make a determination as to why this is correct? I would look at all the rest of the thinking of the person, the other paragraph around it, and see which one of these patterns have been duplicated before. And that would tell me what his volition was when he wrote this part. If one attorney writes continuously in a one, two, one, two, one, two, and hits this pattern, I'm going to say this is his volition. If the next attorney writes this pattern and it's unbroken throughout the document, I'm going to say this belongs to his pattern. This might be Harvard, this might be Yale, this might be Princeton. Each law school teaches different patterns. So you've got to know where the music came from. And when you see the music, you know what your thinking capacity is, and you're going to say, oh, Benjamin Franklin wrote this in the Declaration of Independence. But then he went ahead and he helped Thomas Jefferson write the, Declar the, the Constitution of the United States of America. But then there was a few other little individuals that got their fingers in the pie, so he wasn't the only guilty party up there. <laughs>